Greetings, YouTube. Welcome to the channel. I am Mark, and you're watching Mark's Gas Station. Gas, abbreviated for Gear Acquisition Syndrome. Alright, so today I'm doing a string change on this Silver Burst Epiphone. It's a 2021 Guitar Center exclusive. It is borrowed specs from Gibson's 1954 original. And, uh, okay, let's uh, go through the uh, description here. Well, it is a mahogany body, mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, uh, Grover tuners. Uh, I think this is a Burst Bucker 2. And a Burst Bucker 3. Or I could have it backwards. Let me uh, look at the uh, spec sheet here. Yeah, Pro Bucker 2 in the neck. Pro Bucker 3 in bridge. Locktone ABR bridge. Stop tail tarp. Yeah, stop bar tail, please. Limited edition. That's it. I'm not going to change the pickups in this. I'm going to leave it as is. Sounds pretty good. And, uh, yeah, let's get going here. This is actually the first string change. Like I said, this is a 2021 made in Japan. I mean, not Japan, China. Excuse me. The only uh, plant in China that is exclusive to Epiphone. And I forgot the name of it. So yeah, I bought this in 2021. I never change the strings until now. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is uh what did it what was it called? Locktone ABR Bridge. Epiphone, it's branded Epiphone. But can you notice these little? Uh, let me see. Can you see that? Focus in here. Oh, that's horrible. You can't really see it, can you? Oops, wrong way. Let me see. Black background here. Yeah, you can see it. See those little tabs? So it locks on the post. It's interesting. Thing, branded Epiphone.
it is rocking in the center. I don't know if anybody can see that. No, you can't. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a Graftech nut. Synthetic nut. side check this out again hmm honestly this rule is not cut right Gotta get a better uh, notch straight edge. Next up is the fret rocker. Let's see if we got on even frets. I do have fret sprout on this, so I'm gonna be running a file on the edge here. Let's check out the uh, frets. Got a little rock in there too. Try to use red. That way you can see it. You try to use black sharpie. It gets lost in the reflection. Shadows of the metal. Hey, uh, any of you luthier people out there? I am definitely not a luthier or. <laughs> and, uh, hey, if you got any suggestions um, on tools or techniques, as you see I'm doing wrong or anything like that, please feel free to leave a comment or join in the chat here. Alright, so 
crowning. Where's my, uh...
speaking of my 89 Strat Plus, it's a little story, sort of, whatever, history. The store I bought it from in Tampa was called Thoroughbred Music. <clears throat> People in Florida, supposed to be Tampa area, will know exactly what that is. I consider it probably one of the greatest music stores I've ever shopped at. Not that I've been in every music store, but thus far, Thorbed music was great. They used to have these annual guitar shows that were fantastic. I have some pictures from the past early 90s um, talking about like Night Ranger. Most of them, they're all there performing for free. Uh, God, I've seen countless people at Ace Freely slash Cheap Trick. Larry Coriel. Uh, uh, Stanley Jordan. Uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, Michael Jackson guitarist. Before she was Michael Jackson's guitarist. Just before it. Um, oh, man. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. And uh, got countless others, and it, it was awesome. It's for free, all for free. Hellcasters, I remember seeing Steve Morris, of course. Steve Morris used to come to Largo or Seminole. There used to be a guitar shop. Oh, I forgot the name of that, too. They used to make their own. And um, I think it changed to Buscarino Guitars, and they moved to, I think, Carolinas, I believe, I think. But uh, Steve used to show up in this little shop in Seminole, Florida, down the road from me back in the day. And Cheap Trick, the record company, I don't know if it still is, but it's called Big Three Records. It's in St. Pete. And I used to work at a little mom and pop shop music store called Mad Music right on Central Avenue, St. Pete. And uh, those guys used to show up in there. I remember seeing Robert Zander with his son. It's probably like 10, 10 years ago. Didn't recognize him right off the bat. And I was like looking at him closely. I was, like, oh, you know. I was working with somebody too. And we're, there was two of us working. And I was mainly like a security dude. I didn't really do sales. I'm not a salesman. As a matter of fact, I can't stand salespeople. Certain ones. Not everyone. But anyways. Yeah. He was in there. And I actually showed him an old Yamaha. What's it called? Big band. It's like a little sequencer. It looked like a fairly large calculator remember showing that I don't think he bought anything I think he just was looking and took off with his son and I heard that I wasn't there but Rick Nielsen would show up in there but I wasn't there at the time and uh, another time I wasn't there and one of my favorite bands was in town and I probably saw him that night it was Ween and uh, the people I worked with there knew I was a big Ween fan. And uh, Dean Ween came in, had a chin, uh, string change, <laughs> ching ching, whatever that means, string change. And uh, the fellows that I was working with actually saved the old strings. I can't find them anywhere. It's not like I could authenticate that anyways. And they made them write <laughs> a fucking note, something like love Dean or something like that or some shit. Just something ridiculous. I can't seem to find either one. It was a business card, and Dean signed it and said something like, Love Dean or something. It was just kind of funny. It was funny. But yeah. Um, what was my point? Anyways. Oh, the music store, yes. So, Thor Red Music was pretty much the largest in the South. At the time, this is like the 80s, 90s. Well, actually, he, um, Elliot Rubinson, if anybody you know who that is, he was the owner of Thorbed. He started in 75 or 76, I think. And uh, he went in retail for many years. 
until the late mid to late 90s he ended up selling Thorbred music to Sam Ash because Elliot Rubinson wanted to go into manufacturing so what did he do? He bought Dean guitars and uh, what is it? Armadillo? That was Elliot Rubinson. He was the one that was owned Dean guitars and now his son I guess or I don't know what's going on there but something very screwy I think his son just went off the deep end and just ruined the freaking company or something happened like that. I don't know. So don't, don't, I don't know. It just sucks. And, uh, Thorbed was fantastic. It really was. Those guitar shows were just so, so good. And for free, you know. Okay. One day I'll, uh, take a trip to the last Thorbred location, which was in Clearwater. It was called the Kapok Tree Inn. And this uh, Kapok Tree Inn was like a big banquet restaurant. Um, yeah, they would have banquets, weddings, because they had all this imported like uh, statues and statuettes and decor from Europe. And there's like a, a fountain, water fountain garden in the middle of this uh, K-pop tree pavilion. And when it was Thorbred Music, all those ballrooms were open to Thorbred Music. And, uh, man, when those guitar shows happened, there was, like, stages, like, two or three stages inside that place. It was just beautiful. And I was gonna do a little field trip and film it and kind of show you the, which is now Sam Ash music which used to be Thorbred Music, owned by Elliot Rubinson, who owned Dean Guitars and passed away, and his son, I don't know what he did, but he uh, pretty much screwed up. Uh, I don't know. don't know. It's too bad. So, now we're stuck with Guitar Center and Sam Ash and some mom and pop places, but like I said, Mad Music still exists. I no longer work there. And then the treatment. But uh, yeah, let's do this polishing. This is the uh, freeing.
There. All right. Don't they, uh, I think uh, sometimes they dye ebony, because ebony sometimes is reminiscent of, you can see it, you can see brown streaks. So I've heard that they actually sometimes enhance the ebony by adding a stain dye. I could see like grain, almost like a rosewood thing going on, slightly. Fretboard treatment here with uh, this Gurlitz guitar honey. This is Stella Blue. Come to inspect. You can't see her. Can you? There she comes. Never mind. She's checking it out. What's going on? That's Stella Blue, ladies and gentlemen. She's making an appearance. So yeah, it's guitar honey. All right. I usually don't spray any kind of polish or any kind of, you know, pump spray. I pump right into that.
polish is how I do it. Never spray onto the guitar. You know why? Here. That's why. Once you spray, like onto the surface, like spray around, that kind of thing, you're spraying into these crevices that this rag won't reach into. And you keep on doing that, eventually shit's going to build up, shit's going to get short out or whatever. Who knows? But I tend to do this. Into the rag. Then onto the guitar. Does that make sense? There you go. See his tape? I think it's a, let me read it. It's a scotch, number 2080, delicate surface, delicate surface tape. This shit sucks. It leaves a residue. Delicate surface. Delicate surface, but it leaves a shit all over my guitar. So yeah. Alright, let's do a little metal polishing. We can use that frat polish. You know what? I think I'm gonna do that. You can see this binding is starting to turn yellow. Does anybody notice that? You can't really tell on this camera. But it looks like it's oxidizing, turning yellow. You should see my Strat Plus. It was a Arctic white. And uh, nitro finish. I didn't know anything about nitro finish. There's a lot of things and no-nos that you do not want to use polish with, with, uh, we call it, um, great, oh good, uh, with, uh, <sighs> oh gosh, getting older sucks, <laughs> uh, uh, we call it petroleum Dist distillates, like, you know, 
I remember uh, when I worked at the music store. You know, we used we uh, dealt dealt with a lot of used instruments. So uh, I would uh, be the guy that would clean up new used gear that came in. So I would use armor all on Tolex on amps and beautify them. But keep that shit away from nitro cellulose lacquer <laughs> and uh, certain solvents. And I believe my original Strat case that it came with it ended up deteriorating and so I got a new case for it and it was like a SKB I still have it and uh, for years my Strat would live in the case pretty much and when I would play it I'd take it out but man the guitar turned yellow almost to an orange and uh, it's pretty horrendous and I think the adhesives in the case kind of further that because it lived in the case forever and it just got worse and worse in this case I eventually got rid of the case well I didn't get rid of it I actually use it for another guitar now uh, as a matter of fact I need to get it another case for the Strat but anyways yeah um, it doesn't look like Arctic White I mean it looks kind of cool it's kind of relic naturally you know the finish is fucked up but it's still a fucking fantastic player guitar it just feels great I love it um, but it looks like shit <laughs> it really does so people when you get nitro finished guitars, just be aware if you want to keep it, especially if it's a white, like Arctic White, it's going to eventually turn yellow and shit and oxidize and just kind of get nasty. Um, yeah. I think I probably used some other polishes over the past that I didn't realize that you're not. I think I even, uh, I remember, uh, don't remember, but I thought I remember wiping the whole guitar down with the same rag as an arm roll or something like that. Not realizing any of that shit. Could have been that too. I think it was a combination shit, but at first I thought it was like, man, I, I used to smoke, but man, come on. I wasn't that much of a smoker and I wasn't playing in clubs or anything like that. I was just a hobbyist, always. You know, occasional gig thing here and there. But nothing, yeah. Never uh, was in a full-fledged working band. It's always been a hobby project stuff. I love jamming with other people. And I, I love recording. I'm not necessarily a performer, but anyways, yeah. So talk about yellowing. I should show off the strat and show you. Oh yeah. The finish got soft because there was like a in the uh, in the case there was a strap that holds the lid open, and somehow the strap would lay over part of the body of the strap, so it left an impression. This is how bad the finish got. So I ended up here. We are, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, see, it's yellow. It's supposed to be Arctic White. Um, so wash it out. But uh, see the... There we go. See the arm. I mean, it's naturally... It's kind of cool, you know, but it's a little... Here, let's go down here. You see? The patches are like yellow. I try to rub it off with alcohol. There's some natural relicking dents and dings and shit. Um, this is all original shit. I didn't change anything. It's got the fender lace sensor pickups in it. The hot and bridge silver. Originally had the blue, and I ended up switching it out for the hot. Ooh, what the hell? It's a little loose here. Yeah, I gotta fix that there. Um, looks like I might have.
have to replace those. Getting pretty bad. I replaced these with stainless steel. The uh, big art screws. But yeah, here's the. Uh, see that little. <laughs> Wait, there we go. I rubbed it out, but it was it had an impression of the strap, not the guitar strap, but the strap within the case that holds the top. When you open it up, it would lay on top, and it made it, it, the finish got soft, and it leave an impression of the strap, like the nylon strap. So I end up rubbing this out, try to get rid of this yellow. That's what all the this right here is from. Wait, right here. See how I. But uh, leaving it outside of the case, no more. It doesn't go inside the case. It's been on a rack, guitar rack. Man. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. But you know, it's naturally rare looking. Um, you know, I don't know what you could do with this yellowing. I could just deal with it and let it just peel off it was flaking off at one point here we go this is like you can see the real yellow back here it's supposed to be arctic white man it's not butterscotch it's not you know it's supposed to be arctic white like the back pit guard plate thing there yeah that thing but uh gonna fix that too there's a trim setter in this which uh when i first got this strap i removed it because i didn't understand it and for the longest for years i didn't use it and then uh just uh near the beginning of the pandemic or no yeah no it was during the pandemic i think maybe or just before it i uh, decided to like bring it back to like original specs and I ended up buying another trim setter, installing in there, but I don't think it's right. I need to readjust everything and tweak it out a little bit. And, uh, all right, we're almost done here. We've got to put on strings now. Looking good. Pretty clean. Uh, okay. All right, string time. I had a pair, this pair of tweezers, tweezers, needle nose pliers, craftsmen, since I started playing guitar, and I've used it ever since for string changes. Fantastic.
All right. Three hours. Three hours. And it's still not tuned. <laughs> um, I should save you the boredom of intonation. Yeah, I think I'll cut this video now because it's just too long. A little boring. As usual, I don't know why I do these videos, these live streams that are mods or repairs or whatever. I don't know. Maybe some people like it. I don't. So far, I don't know. They don't have that many viewers or subscribers. And by the way, hey, who's that? Somebody from somewhere. T R O ninety four. Hello. All right. I'll save you the boredom of me tuning this in intonation, but essentially, essentially, ah, man, I'm having a hard time speaking today. Really weird. <clears throat> Anyways. It is done. I changed the strings. Did some fret leveling and cleaning. But uh, here we are. Nice and spigot span and shiny and all right. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so thank you for turning in. I'll clean up here. Maybe do a live jam. I know I said I wasn't going to do it because of uh, noodling. It's just uh, it's horrendous. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Maybe I'll just jam by myself and then uh, whatever. Just talking to myself essentially here. All right, so. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry, it's a little boring. And uh, thanks for tuning in for the 50th time. Please subscribe. And have a good day. Welcome back for part two. All right, I'm finishing the silver burst string change setup. What I did off camera is I lowered the action pretty freaking low, and I'm about ready to tune it. Did a little string string stretching. And After I tune it, I'll stretch the strings again. And I don't use a tool, I just use my freaking fingers, man. I, I just really think that string stretcher thing tool is unneeded. I think it's ridiculous. But whatever, it's me. My opinion. Doesn't matter. Stretch again. A little tug. Tune it again. Once again, go up to the note. 
Not down to the note. Oh yeah. So we gotta raise the bridge here. Here's a tuning tip for beginners. Put your digital tuners away and get yourself a pitch pipe or a tuning fork or a keyboard nearby and use your ears and tune your guitar that way. Yes, intonation, geez. Probably the most important part here. Alright, so. My mm -hmm. Hey, is there a better way of doing this?
All right. All right. Let me hook up. To the rig, which is this crazy zoom. So, that's a little dusty here. Got a little collection of these old Zoom units, man. Okay, there's no amp here involved. This is an amp simulator, 503, 500 series. Oof. Oof, yeah, no. Thank you. 
check, check, check. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> check, check. All right, calling it quits. Jumping on the zoom pedals here and the newly changed uh, strings on this silver burst. And a noodle fest. All right, I'm out. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for another long one. Thanks. Peace out.